Start off with the clerk calling the roll, please. Ms. Bumke? Here. Mr. Cavalier? Here. Mr. Cohen? Here. Mr. Dutenheffer? Here. Mrs. Maurer? Here. Ms. Shelton? Here. Mr. Snellings? Here. Mr. Foley, you have a quorum. Thank you, Meg. Um, at this point, um, Meg Bomke is going to lead us in the invocation, and Gary Snellings will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Actually, Cindy Shelton's going to lead us in the invocation. Okay. Thank you. Great. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, Happy New Year. Ready to have a, a, a good uh, 2019. And our first order of business is the election of a chairman. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, opening the floor for nominations, and then um, I'll close the floor for nominations, and then we will vote um, in the order that nominations were made until there's a majority um, approving that uh, nominee. Um, so with that said, I will open the floor at this point uh, for nominations for chairman of the Stafford County Board of Supervisors for calendar year 2019. I'd like to nominate Mr. Snellings. Second. I uh, actually don't need a second on this. Uh, we would take any, all the nominations and vote on them individually. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Hearing none, uh, at this point... Um, Please cast your vote for Gary Snellings for Chairman of the Board of Supervisors. Okay, uh, seven in favor. Uh, therefore, uh, Mr. Snellings will now take over as Chair of the Board of Supervisors and move forward with the election of Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Foley, and thank uh, my fellow board members for your confidence. I We'll do the best job I can. If you feel I'm not doing the job, please slap me side the head and tell me so. I'm glad I'm sitting beside <laughs> At this time, I will take nominations for vice chairman. I'd like to nominate Mr. Dudenheffer. I have a nomination for Mr. Dudenheffer. Are there any other nominations? Here and none, I close the nominations. Please cast your vote for Mr. Dudenheffer. For vice chairman. Tally the vote. Mr. Dudenhoff, congratulations, you're our new vice chairman. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the regular agenda with, I think we have one addition, is that right, Mr. Foley? That is correct, the information at your table there on a uh, appointment. And that is appointments to boards, authorities, committees, and commissions, correct? No, one addition is before you, um, appointments to the board's authorities and commissions um, regarding um, a nomination from Mr. Cavalier for the appointment of Timothy Haddix to the FAMPO Citizen Transportation Advisory Committee. Okay. And that would be an addition to the agenda. Right. Do I hear a motion? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cohen. Please, any discussion? No. Please cast your vote. Tell the vote. And Mr. Chairman, um, as you move to the next item, I, th I think the tradition in the past has been to change chairs, but that's completely up to you as to how you want to proceed. Yeah, I'm, let's get the calendar out of the way, and then we're going to break, take about a 15-minute break, change chairs, and we'll go from there. Um, do I have a motion to approve the 2019 board meeting calendar, which was in your packet? So move. I have a motion to have a second. I have a second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Comment. Just... The only date that that is somewhat disturbing for me, I mean, we made adjustments in holidays except for the 4th of July. We have the 2nd as a board day right before the 4th of July. That could be, I'm not sure if that's going to be problematic for anyone. It's not for me, but it, a lot of people travel. 
Correct. Mm -hmm. So the fourth is on a Friday? No. No, it's on no, a Thursday. Thursday, Thursday this on year. Thursday. I, th I would say it's easier if you, I mean, if you're going to take off the fourth of July, you're going to take off the Friday and not the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I think leaving it on the second would be easier from a vacation perspective. I just thought if there was any board member who knew of a conflict now or something, we could does anyone have a conflict at the know? Nope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess everybody's good okay. with yeah. Ms. Baumke. Um, so I have a couple other. Just one is a, a little note um, on the meeting that we have um, on April sixteenth, the regular meeting when we set the tax rate, approved the CIP, and our adopted uh, two thousand twenty one budget. You know, we have discussion every year about whether or not that should be the 3 o'clock or the 7 o'clock meeting. Um, I'm actually going to be coming back from the Boston Marathon that day, and I always think that it's really appropriate for us to set the tax rate in the evening when we have constituents that are here that can participate in that. And I would like to designate the evening session for the approval of all those items and not the 3 o'clock meeting. I agree. Um, and then I have one other item on the day, uh, the Thanksgiving meeting, we always end up changing. So if we want to do that now, that might be prudent. Uh, our regular meeting is the 19th, and we typically move that to the next Tuesday. So just to give people advance notice. Ms. Um, Baumke? In this case, that happens to fall the week before Thanksgiving. Oh, it does? It does. Oh. Okay, well, then I was looking at the wrong calendar. Okay, great. Perfect. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, but I do have a concern about the November 6th meeting um, because we have Election Day on the 5th, and having done this last, <laughs> last year, uh, what ends up happening is Monday night is either get ready for Election Day or it's the Battle of the Bands, or when the banding against hunger. Um, and then we have election day, and then we're doing nonstop board meeting on the on the Wednesday. So I'm not sure if that that's that triple slam for many of us is going to be practical. How about Thursday? Anybody have an objection moving that to Thursday? I think this past oh Go ahead. I think this past year we moved it to Wednesday. I think we did. Yeah. yeah. So that when what is proposed here is Wednesday the sixth. Yeah. Proposed, proposed it for Wednesday. Oh, that's, which is the day after. That's the day after the election. So, I mean, it's fine. It's, it's just that was one of the things people raised was it was right after the election day and people were pretty tired. Yeah. But. Any other thoughts? We can't vote on any land issues, so it's not going to be a heavy agenda. <laughs> no, it's not going to be a heavy agenda. Uh, and, we'll and it starts at 3 in the afternoon, so it's not like we, we, could, we could possibly cancel committee meetings or something like that. Okay, any other thoughts on the calendar? Do I have a motion? <laughs> you already have a motion. Do we have a motion? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My mistake. Uh, any other discussion? Are we going to accept the amendment to target the evenings uh, on the April 16th for those sessions? For the setting the tax rate, are we moving that to the evening session? I would think so, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Yeah, and okay. I think that was the second, so I accept that as well. Okay. Any other discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion passes seven to nothing. Um, it's time to go into closed session, uh, but before we do that, I want to take about a five minute break, let all board members decide where you want to sit. And while we're in uh, closed session, the staff can rearrange the voting machines and everything else. The other thing I would like to do, if I have permission from the board, is when we come out of closed session, uh, that we have public presentations. Rather than having them sit here all the afternoon, we'll just have them come up right after closed session. Is that acceptable? Absolutely. Let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back and go to closed session. Okay. Make sure you tell everybody where you're going to sit. Mr. Chair. The comment up to now so that we don't have to sit out here and wait for us to come out of closed meeting because it could be a long one. 
So we're going to do public comment now. I would ask that, remind everyone that comes up to speak that you have three minutes. Um, once you come up and start speaking, the green light will come on. When you have about a minute left, the yellow light will come on. When the red light comes on, please wrap up your comments. I have one speaker card, uh, Mr. Greg Gavin. Uh, Gregory D. Gavin, 242 Stony Hill Road in Hartwood. Dear members, I, I speak today about improving access to the Rappahannock River at Lake Mooney Park. I wish to first acknowledge the improvements that have been made, second, expose the modest problems that the president, and third, provide solutions to facil facilitate improved access to the Rappahannock River for everyone in the future. Next slide, please. I was told by Mr. Roy Newton of the Stafford County Park Service that a local Boy Scout troop had cleared the trails and built quite a few benches along the pedestrian access to a single waterfront recreation spot. Please join me in publicly thanking them for their work as their efforts have added tremendously to the park. Next slide, please. I wish to build upon their efforts with the help of the Virginia DGIF, Stafford County Park Service, Friends of the Rappahannock, and you, providing a vision that allows Lake Mooney Rappahannock <coughs> Waterfront Park to realize its potential as a vibrant water, white water canoe area full of local history, interesting geography, trails, exercise, and fun. Next slide, please. Mr. Owee Wendell, Director of Capital and Facilities Planning at the Virginia DGI, DGIF reported that the Board of Directors is currently reviewing our application for a grant for the canoe launch, parking lot, and pedestrian bridge over Rocky Penn Creek connecting the park to the Rappahannock waterfront. Please take a moment to contact him extolling the merits of the grant application. Mr. Brian Southall, Assistant Director of the Stafford County Park Service, said he would follow up with the Virginia DGIF. Please take a moment to contact him rendering your support. Mr. Brian Hoffman, Friends of the Rappahannock, has graciously offered his enthusiastic river-loving volunteers with various saws, wheelbarrows, rakes, and equipment. Please help coordinate his volunteers with our Park Service to help clear more trails. Next slide, please. Moving forward, this is my vision for improved access to the Rappahannock River at Lake Mooney Park. First, improve vehicle pedestrian access for the Stafford County uh, Swift Water Rescue Team for emergency and fire rescue for Stafford County law enforcement as well as for the public. Uh, my survey and research of the land reveals that there is a, a seminal spot to reach in order to properly and effectively breach the land and advance downwards, uh, down, downslope towards the riverfront. There are three ways to accomplish this. All have merits. Option one includes opening the gate and allowing access on the western side. The gate gives Jason Towery of Stafford County Public Utilities overall control of the property and is topographically feasible. Next slide, please. Option two involves breaching the, uh, excuse me, option two in involves uh, breaching the western part of the property it is topographically feasible and has little impact on, on the facility. Option, next slide, please. Option three uses the present parking lot and require installation of back gate allowing emergency and safety personnel immediate entrance. Next slide, please. Any option would greatly improve access to the Rappahannock River, improving lives of all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gavin. Uh, I have no more speaker cards. Is there anyone on my right that would like to come before the board? You can speak on, yes, sir. Please come up, state your name and address, please. Yes, my name is Joe McKinley. 103 Brookcrest Lane, Stafford, Virginia, 22554. Okay, I encountered it October 28th. I had people come to my house, cut down trees. So I had did, done my research earlier with the, uh, the landfill and stated that, asked how much it would cost for the trailer to come up and dump the logs. So what happened was, when the people had brought the logs up to the landfill, the landfill stated, they're not going to accept him. So I had to go up there, show my sticker on my mirror, which didn't mean nothing to the lady at the, you know, when I drove up. And then she said I had to go outside the gate, hook his trailer to my truck, and then take a right and pay. So when I took a right to pay to unload the logs, to pay to unload the logs, I asked the lady how much I owe. She said $4. The phone rang. She answered the phone from the lady up top of the hill, hung it back up, said she said you have to pay 20. I got the receipt in my hand if you want to see it. Date and time receipt. Now I don't call that very professional. 
Mr. McKinney, we cannot engage with you, but what I will do is ask the county administrator uh, if he could get someone from the R board to contact you. Um, if you would give his name, your name and phone, your phone number to the clerk, and we'll have somebody contact you and see if we can get it straightened out for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone on my left? Come, please come up, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please state your name and address, please. Timothy Mitchell. I'm at uh, 416 Woodstream Circle, South Virginia 22556. So uh, first time here, uh, I was falsely accused 2016 and 17 and uh, almost lost my house, my job, everything. So my background, I'm a federal police officer. I work for DOD. And um, one of the accusations was that I was harassing somebody and all that stuff. Uh, fast forward everything. Everything was dropped because nothing panned out. I have all the documentations and all that stuff. Personally, I'm federal law enforcement. I know their statutes and limitations to what they can do towards me and repercussions for using the magistrate and the sheriff's office to come after me. Nothing was ever done by the sheriff's office, but everything came towards me. I had to pay over $5,000 for lawyer fees and things like that. But yet, I kept my head, high, my head held high, and um, I was very upset that nothing was ever done. I just wanted to bring that to your all's attention, mainly because that a lot of us are here, and we pay our taxes, and we do what we're supposed to do, but yet we still get left behind. And I don't want nobody else to go through that. So thank you for letting me share. Thank you, sir. Anyone else on my left like to address the board? Anyone in the chamber at all like to address the board? With that, I'll close public comments. Uh, Mr. Dudenheffer, if you would read us into closed session, please. Mr. Chairman, a resolution to authorize closed meeting, whereas the board desires to hold a closed meeting for one discussion of and consideration of board appointments, two discussion and considerations of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose, where discussion is an open meeting in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiation strategy of the board, and three discussion concerning a prospective business where no previous announcement has been made of the business interest in locating its facilities uh, in the county, in the county. So move. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Maurer. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion passes 7 to 0. We're in closed session. A resolution to certify the actions of the Stafford County Board of Supervisors in a closed meeting on January 8, 2019, whereas the board has on this, the eighth day of January 2019, adjourned into a closed meeting in accordance with the formal vote of the board and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. And whereas the Virginia Freedom of Inf Information Act, as it became effective July 1st, 1989, provides for certification of that, of that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with the law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Stafford County Board of Supervisors does hereby certify on this, the eighth day of January 2018, that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act were discussed in the closed meeting in which this certification applies. That's a mouthful. And two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the said closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, and considered by the board. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Second by Ms. Maurer. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion carries seven to nothing. Item number three, appointments to boards, authorities, committees, and commissions. Uh, and we're going to go through these one by one. So as I read them off, I'll need a motion. A second, and then we'll have a vote. First one is advisory board for law enforcement towing. Reappointment of Kevin Beach, Roy Boswell, David P. Decatur, Keith Harrison, David Hodge, First Sergeant Brian Jacobs, 
Lee Peters III, Timothy Rudy, and Peter Sullivan. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Cast your votes. Tally the vote. Just point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is it a requirement that we read every name? Yes. I checked it. Not, I don't remember doing that in the past, but. Yeah, I checked it before we started. Okay. No, most of them are Motion passes seven to nothing. Yes. Advisory board for private trespass, reappointment of Kevin Beach, Roy Boswell, David P. Decatur, Keith Harrison, David Hodge. Brian Jacobs, Lee Peters III, Timothy Rudy, and Peter Sullivan. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. Tally the vote. Motion carries 7 to nothing. Agricultural Review Board. Uh, we have Irma Clifton, Charles Dodgen, Doris McAdams, Luther McPherson, and Mark Osborne. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion so to have a second? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, minor correction. Did you say agricultural or architectural? I'm sorry, architectural. Okay. You're right. Thank you for correcting me. So moved. I have a second. Set. Any discussion? Cast your votes. Tally the vote. Motion carries seven to nothing. Board of Building Code Appeals Joseph Alexander, Burton Bigany, Jerry Hall. Caleb Lang, Samer Salaby, and Gerald Snellings. So no, moved. No kin to me, by the way. So moved. I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion carries. Ms. Shelton, are you in agreement here? Yes, sir. Okay. Motion carries seven to nothing. Board of Zoning Appeals, appointment Dan Kim and Heather Steffel. So moved. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman. Right. Mr. Snellings. We've got Mr. Brian Jenkins. That's correct. He I'm said sorry, Dan you, Kim. You're correct. You're correct. <laughs> I didn't cross him off. My apologies. It would be R1902 that you need to vote on, please. I'm sorry? Resolution R1902 for the appointment to the BCA. Right. Yes, I see what you're saying. Okay, this proposed resolution 19-02 make it clear to the public we do not have the authority to appoint we recommend to the circuit judge so we are recommending brian jenkins and heather steffel do i have a motion so moved second i have a motion to second any discussion cast your vote tally the vote motion carries seven to nothing uh central rapid regional library board of trustees Appointment of Kimberly Young. You have a motion. Motion. So motion in the second. In the discussion. Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Community policy and management team for at youth risk and families. Appointment of Joe Ellen Armstrong, Meg Bomke, and William C. Tigner. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. I have a motion in the second and the discussion. Cast your votes. Tally the vote. Motion carries seven to nothing. Fire Prevention Code of a Board of Appeals. Appointment of Michael T. Cooper and Thomas J. Woodford. So uh, moved. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Cast, any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. We need to, to. wait a minute, it's, it's, <laughs> did everybody hit the button. buttons here? Okay, I'm, Ms. Ms. Mao, yes. are you in agreement? That's the 7-0. There we go. <laughs> Fredericksburg Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, appointment of Meg Bomke as, as an alternate. As alternate. Tom Cohen as an alternate. Uh, Wendy Maurer as a sitting member, and Cindy Shelton. Mark Dudenhepper. And Mark Dudenhepper, I'm sorry. So moved. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Cast your votes. Tally your vote. Motion carries seven to nothing. Re Fredericksburg Regional Alliance, reappointment of Jack Cavalier and Cindy Shelton. So moved. 
Second. second. I have a motion and a second in discussion. Cast your votes. Tally the votes. George Washington Regional Alliance, uh, appointment of Meg Bomke, Mark Dudenheffer, Wendy Maurer, and Tom Cohen. Ms. Maurer, Ms. Dudenhe Mr. Dudenheffer and Ms. Maurer will serve as, as alternates. It's a commission, not alliance. Commu yeah. Oh, I'm George sorry, Regional, Regional commission. commission, yeah. I have a motion? So move. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Cast your votes. Tally the vote. Government Military Affairs Council. Uh, Do you have a motion uh, to drop out? Oh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we no longer participate in this uh, committee. I have a motion not to participate. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Shelton. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion. Motion carries seven to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden Lake Service District Advisory Board, a reappointment of Scott Ray. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Local Finance Board, uh, reappointment of Ms. Cindy Shelton. So, I have a, I have so a, move. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, the appoint, reappointment of, well, we got to wait on school board, don't we? Because they're going to make that appointment. And we got to wait on Planning Commission. We're only doing. Um, We're only doing uh, Danny Kim, correct? Not Danny Kim. Yes, yeah. Danny Kim. Appointment of Danny Kim to the Parks and Recreation Commission. Do I have a motion? Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Mr. Dudenheffer, I'm, I'm assuming you vote. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's happened to all. A Potomac Ra and Rappahannock Transportation Commission. VRE, reappointment of Jack Cavalier as alternate, Mark Dudenheffer as primary, Wendy Maurer as primary, and Cindy Shelton as all alternate. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, this is actually going to be pursuant to resolution R 1905 with the names that you just stated read into the resolution. Okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, so we need a new motion, correct? So moved for our 1905 if the motion, the second maker. Okay, I that. amend my motion uh, to include this for R19-05. And I amend my second. I have a motion and a second for R19-05. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Um, Potomac Watershed Roundtable. Reappointment of Ms. Bomke as the alternate and Mr. Cohen as primary. I have so a motion. Moved. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion carries. I assume, Ms. Mary, you're voting in favor. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Rappahannock Area Agency on a Aging, uh, now known as RAAA Healthy Generations, the reappointment of Tom Cohen and Linda Musselman. Second. No motion. I have a second. Any discussion? Cast your votes. Tally the votes. Motion carries seven to nothing. Rappahannock Juvenile Detention Commission. Reappointment of Andrea Light as alternate and William C. Tigner at large. Second. I have a motion to second in discussion. Cast your votes. Tally the votes. Rappahannock Regional Jail Authority Board, the reappointment of Mr. Jack Cavalier and Wendy Maurer as alternate. So, so moved. Move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally your vote. 
Folks, we've only got about 85 of these left, so bear with us here. No, <laughs> we're getting close to the end. Uh, Rappahannock Regional Solid Waste Management Board, reappointment of Ms. Bomke, Ms. Maurer as alternate, and Ms. Shelton as primary. So move. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion carries seven to nothing. Rappahannock River Basin Commission. Reappointment of Ms. Bomke as alternate, and Mr. Cohen as primary. So move. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Rappahannock Youth Services and Group Home Commission. Reappointment of Ms. Donna Krause as government representative and Gary F. Snellings as Board of Supervisors. So move. A motion, and do I have a second. second and a second? Any discussion? Cast your votes. <coughs> Tally the vote. <coughs> uh, Telecommunications Commission. Uh, reappointment of David Diley. Greg, somebody help me out there. Calangelin. Thank Calangian. you. <laughs> Thank you. Glenna Mead, Brian Ronstead, Jeffrey Schrod, Schrade. Schrade. Schrade, and Scott Tate, and Stephen Brand from the Hartwood District. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Ms. Mara, I assume you're going to vote. I did. This thing's not registering me. Okay, motion carries seven to nothing. Thurman Brisbane Center, reappointment of Ms. Donna Krause. So moved. Second. I have a motion second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion carries seven to nothing. Transportation Impact Fees Board of Appeals, reappointment of Mr. Tim Hall. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Wetlands Chesapeake Bay Board, reappointment of Jim Ryuda. Second. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Uh, thank you very much. Ms. Bomke, I think you have a motion concerning board committee assignments. Yes, I do. Um, I move that we um, extend um, the standing committees that we will, that they will continue from last year until our next meeting on January 22nd. I have a motion and I have a second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion carries seven to nothing. Reports by board members, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we did forget the, uh, the addition that I had for the uh, Citizens Transportation Advisory Committee. My, my apologies, Mr. Cavalier. I'd uh, like to make that motion. To appoint second. Mr. Timothy Haddix? Yes. Mr. Cavalier uh, makes a motion. Ms. Myers second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Mr. Chairman, do we need to do the Workforce Investment Board? Oh, that's not expiring. That's yeah, right. Never mind. Expiring. Motion carries seven to nothing. Uh, reports by board members. Madam Clerk. Mrs. Mauer. So I get to be first. Um, good evening and welcome to 2019. Today I took my first yearbook photo in more than 20 years as an uh, honorary member of the AG Wright debate team. They, I helped them uh, do some coaching and I'll tell you what, it, the best part about this job is, is the kids and I know the school board over there deals with the kids more but uh, we get to do the fun kids stuff so that was uh, probably the the highlight of my time on this board was, was sitting for that year yearbook photo. I also want to congratulate Mr. Snellings and Mr. Dudenheffer. Mr. Snellings, you might not remember this, but when I was first elected and um, uh, before I took office, 
I started attending some of the meetings and, and you come up to me, because I was sitting in the, I was trying to be respectful, I wasn't on the board, so I was sitting in the audience uh, in one of these committee meetings and you said, no, you sit at the table. And, uh, and so I had just finished reading the book Lean In. And so it was very, very timely because that's one of the, um, the themes Ms. Sandbergs has mentioned and it was, it was indicative of the grace and uh, respect you have for everyone on this board. And so it was an absolute pleasure to vote for you for chair today. And uh, I want to congratulate you. And well, now this is the time of year that everybody announces whether or not they're running for election or re-election. And uh, although I've never hidden the fact that I have had cancer for more than 12 years, and most people think I'm in remission, but no, it's something that I've lived with. I take chemo pills every day to keep the symptoms from killing me. Um, it's uh, in other stuff. This is a type of cancer called a chronic leukemia. And unfortunately, the chewing gum and duct tape that I've been using to hold this body together, a few doctor's visits as of late, has made me realize that I need to probably take a strategic pause from politics and focus on my health. And so it's with a heavy heart that I am announcing that I'm not running for re-election. And, uh, but I'm not resigning and I will continue out my term on this board. We've got a lot of really controversial topics coming up this year, such as uh, capital improvement planning and uh, growth management. And so I'm looking forward to working uh, with this board on those issues. And, and what I consider more, more importantly, but less sexy, are the financial management issues, how we disperse and um, the, the policies in which we utilize the taxpayer funds. And it is not, this is the way we've always done it, is, is one phrase that uh, frustrates me very greatly. And so I want to thank you, Mr. Foley, for leaning forward on a lot of our financial policies. I know we have a lot more to do this year, and I'm looking forward to working with this board and staff on, on those issues. But before I close out my comments, um, I would like to make one final, um, one final comment, Mr. Chairman, by asking my planning commissioner. Ms. Crystal Venuch to consider running for this seat. She um, has shown through her time on the Planning Commission that she is just wicked smart and a fighter for the Rock Hill District, and I have appreciated her service as my appointee, and I hope she continues that service uh, by running for the Board of Supervisors. And should she make that decision to run, she will have my full support. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I conclude my remarks. Ms. Shelton. Thanks for letting me follow that. <laughs> so, so you're not running for re-election. <laughs> I am not running for re-election. So I am not. Uh, Ms. Maurer, that just makes me sad. And so I'm going to try to get past that. And I just wanted to thank uh, Ms. Bomke for all the mentoring and leadership that she's given me over the last year. And, and you as well, because there's so many things that you have no idea about when you run for office even when you've been on a planning commissioner or you've done other things, Mr. Cohen. So I really wanted to reach out to our, our now former chairman, Ms. Bomke, and really thank you very much because that really meant a lot to me. And it, I'm going to tell you, it made a huge difference. So thank you very much. And then I also want to thank all the citizens. All these names that we gave out are all volunteers. They're not paid for anything. And they're the things that you guys do to support us and support all of our community in Stafford County is so important. So we went through this long litany of different things. We have more. So if anybody's really interested in helping us out to formulate how we want this, our, our community to look like in 10, 15, 20 years or tomorrow, please uh, volunteer. And that concludes my comments. And I'm so sorry, Ms. Maurer. I just don't know what to say. Thanks. Ms. Bomke. So, um, Wendy, you've done a great job for three years, a really great job. You've really given it your heart and soul. You've got a full-time job, and, um, but I'm proud of you because you're putting yourself first, and you're not somebody that typically does that, and your health is paramount for you and your family. Um, so I wish you the best, and um, I do believe Crystal would do a great job in your seat. So um, anyway, I just want to say uh, congratulations to Gary and Mark. And Gary, you and I had a great working relationship last year. We really, it's, it's really nice to have another set of eyes and ears 
on everything that you do as board chair and vice chair and working with staff. So I um, think you and Mark will be a great team and look forward to a great year. Mr. Cavalier. Thank you. Just want to wish everybody a happy new year and congratulate Mr. Snellings and Mr. Dudenheffer for their elections to our leadership spots. Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Ms. Giles. Um, also, congratulations to Mr. Snellings, Mr. Dudenheffer. Thank you, Ms. Baumke, for helping me during my first year. Uh, Ms. Morrow, I've had the pleasure of knowing and working with you in many different formats for almost 20 years now. Um, and I just find it amazing. I come down to sit next to you, and you, and you decide not to run again. Um, but I, you will be <laughs> just running. No. Um, but well, you will be sorely missed. Um, and I can't speak highly enough of Ms. Vanooch. I've had the pleasure of working with her. Um, it's always nice to see my former students rise up um, to great accomplishments. So uh, two quick things. I did uh, have the honor of attending the engine housing ceremony at White Oak. Uh, that is, if you go on my Facebook page, there's a long story about why they do it. The fire chief did a terrific job. It was great to see uh, the various people at White Oak, the volunteers. Uh, that was a volunteer station that started in 1973. It is an amazing group of men and women that have served there. There were life members and current members, and it was just amazing to see also our regular staff also coming to support the volunteers. Uh, and it was just terrific, and it's, it's a great experience. Uh, and lastly, I did a ride along with the police on January 30th, uh, uh, December 30th. Um, which I like to do, I rotate between fire, EMT, and, and police. And uh, it you, gives you a great uh, experience understanding what our men and women deal with. And we stopped to help with an accident, and there were two police cars, myself standing in the road, and two deputies, and a whole bunch of yellow vests vest being seen. And there was a, a, apparently, um, alleged, we'll say, until the trial, uh, impaired driver whose angle had it that she hit one of our deputies with her side view mirror. Um, and fortunately, f she didn't do more damage, um, and the deputy's doing well, but it just really brings into clarity the dangers that our deputies and our EMTs and our fire and rescue people have to deal with every day. Um, and so I appreciate their service, especially this is why I do this, is so that I can see what they're having to put up with. And um, not only having to deal with impaired drivers, and one could hope that people would not get behind the wheel if they're not cognizant of their faculties 100%. Um, but we appreciate what our men and women do, and um, we support you 100%. Mr. Dudenheffer. <clears throat> Thank you, Cheryl. I, I think it's a little early to uh, engage in Ms. Maurer's eulogy, so uh, I, will, uh, I will not do that. So um, just uh, there, we, as, uh, as was, uh, was mentioned, I think, by Ms. Maurer, we have some very important initiatives that are going to come forward early in 2019. Um, obviously, this growth management We've been working on this now for, I don't know, six, eight months. And um, we are at the point now where we're gonna roll that out to the community and ask all those people out there who say we're growing too fast or we're not growing fast enough or why don't you do this, why don't you do that? We will have those open meetings and I really, really encourage the citizens to, to turn out. I'd hate to have this growth management thing turn out to where all the developers are the ones who turns out and the private citizens who have an opinion and uh, should be heard equally uh, miss out on coming and it appears that, um, that that whatever, a certain group gets their way on, on a lot of the things that we do. So I don't think, do we have a schedule on that yet? Do, those, no, I don't think so. Okay, we, but we do have, we've been working since February on a, on a transportation plan, and it's a slow and methodical process. Ms. Maurer and I have been uh, working on a working group with the staff uh, now since February, I think, and it was all, we, we'll, we'll, we are having two town hall meetings scheduled for next week. Uh, again, we have, we have not voted on anything yet, but we have, uh, data that we've collected and kind of the beginnings of the plan that we want to move forward with to address some of our 
some as many of our transportation issues as we possibly can. The, uh, the first meeting is Monday night, the 14th at Moncure Elementary School at seven o'clock. And the next public uh, town hall is on the fourth, I'm sorry, 16th at Drew Middle School at seven o'clock. So please, please don't go on Facebook and complain about what we don't do. Please show up and help us do what we need to do. Um, it's, it's really important. Um, there's nothing worse for, for us as board members to go online and see people complain, but they, they, they don't want to be part of the, the solution. So please come out and uh, give us your opinion. And, and I will bet that I, out of each of these meetings, we'll come up with something we haven't thought of. But uh, it's, it's, it's really important. We're really proud of the work that our staff has done. Some experts have really spent a lot of their time on it, and it's, it's, I can't tell you how important um, this is and then the future town halls on, on how we're going to manage growth. Uh, a year ago, I sat here and told everyone I was going to build a theater in Stafford that, uh, to replace the one that was torn down. And believe me, every single week since then, I've, I've engaged with the developer, and we've had hiccups. And we're, we're still in some hiccups. But I, I can't announce today, based on a conversation I had just an hour ago, that the Regal Cinema is a European company. I didn't know that. But that the US uh, corporate headquarters for Regal has tentatively approved the new construction costs and the new construction plan that is being put forward by Pence. It's in the hands of the, their European, European headquarters, and they expect to get back a positive response um, in the very near future. To show that we're moving forward, two events, one event has taken place and the other one is planned for this week, but last month, in the middle of the month, uh, Pence took responsibility for management of the stormwater pond on 610 um, and we'll, we'll maintain that for the future. I think uh, while it's a baby step, I don't think they would have taken that step had they not, um, not intended to, to move forward. I also know that they've turned down several tenants that they didn't think were kind of in the line of the upscale project that they're trying to build. So, um, and then this week, Jeff Pence is meeting with uh, our planning department to go over kind of the next step on how they get their financing. So um, at any minute, I'm hoping that we can um, announce the, you know, the full moving forward. I'm not going to believe it myself until there's a bulldozer moving dirt around on the property, but I, I honestly believe that it's coming and I, I've had a great conversations with them. So please keep the faith. We're going we're gonna to get a movie theater built. About six, about e almost a year later than which I wish I wish it yeah, wish I wish it would have occurred. So thank you very much. Last thing I want to do real quick is um, we are rebuilding our fire department. Um, we have a new fire chief. He's only been around for several months. We have a new assistant fire chief, and uh, they really went out of their way in December to do a couple things for me. My church put together uh, thank you packages for fi for. Uh, first responders, and uh, we had nine, nine firemen, including the chief, show up at the, the presentation where they gave these, um, gave these packages, individual packages for as many of the uh, firefighters as I could, and um, so a couple other things he's done. So I, I want to publicly thank him for, the, for his efforts and what they're doing, and I'm excited about where we're uh, going to go forward with our fire and rescue department. Thanks. Mr. Snellings. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let me first of all uh, thank our clerks, Marsha and Cheryl, who put this mammoth package together that we've been through appointing boards and members and <coughs> commissions and boards that a lot of work. You contacted a lot of people, and I really do appreciate it. <clears throat> I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Bomfke for her service as chairman. She and I worked very closely together. Uh, we had a couple of disagreements here and there, but that's normal. But uh, Maggie did a great job, and I do appreciate everything. I really do. And uh, Ms. Maurer, I'll reserve comments on you until the first meeting in December. I didn't say you were dead yet. I'm saying I'm going to write an elaborate speech and give it the first meeting of December. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, report of the county attorney. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no report at this time. County Administrator. I have no comments, Mr. Chairman. We'll move to the last item, new business, public works, budget and appropriate additional funds for the ferry road intersection project. Proposed resolution R19-23. Thank you. And good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the board. I to make sure I say Mr. Chair. Uh, Jason Towery, Director of Public Works, um, here to speak about R1923, which budgets and appropriates additional funds for the ferry uh, road intersection project. Uh, there are a lot of numbers that we can discuss on this, and I'm happy to do so in detail if needed, but for ease of our discussion, I'll just keep, uh, I'll just use some round numbers. Um, the ferry road intersection project is a county project that VDOT is administering. Uh, as recently as this fall, uh, the budget for the project, the, the county base portion of the project, if you will, uh, was estimated to be approximately $4 million. In addition, there are two other betterments associated with the project. Um, one is a utility fund betterment uh, for the, to build a portion of a new force main, and then there's also a betterment associated with Ferry Farm that the George Washington Foundation uh, is uh, paying for. Neither of these betterments are included in, in this discussion, the numbers that we're discussing. They are separate uh, betterments that VDOT has costed out separately. Um, Transportation projects, as you may know, are broken into three phases. The first is the design phase, then they have a right-of-way acquisi uh, right acquisition and a utility relocation phase, and then a construction phase. In the case of Ferry Road, the first two phases of the project were estimated to be approximately $1.8 million, and the construction phase was estimated to be approximately $2.2 .2 million, hence the $4 million or so number. Again, this is just for the county portion of it. Uh, this is a revenue sharing project, which means that the county uh, contributes 50% of the cost and VDOT matches the other 50%. But typically, um, the county would be responsible for any overages. Um, in this case, so far, the county has expended approximately $900,000 um, of county funds to get through the first two phases. Uh, that is, again, the design, right-of-way acquisition, utility relocation. And VDOT, likewise, has spent about $900,000, uh, making, again, that $1.8 million total. Additionally, um, the uh, county has already contributed our 50% match um, for the construction phase that was, uh, again, based on the original $2.2 .2 million estimate. Uh, VDOT has informed us that the bids have come in and, and that the, the bids they've received uh, exceeded their previous construction estimate by approximately $550,000 for the county-associated uh, portion of the project, and they're asking the county for a commitment uh, to these funds to continue the project moving forward. If these funds are not committed and the project were to fall through, um, VDOT has informed us that the county um, may be liable for any and all costs up to, up to this date, which would be the full $1.8 million. Um, so really the, the two choices for the, before the board are either to uh, budget and appropriate the additional uh, $550,000 in additional funds or uh, cancel the project, in which case uh, no construction would occur, but we would effectively be out that $1.8 million. Staff, uh, just so the board knows, staff is still working with VDOT and the C CTB to attempt to transfer previously allocated uh, revenue sharing funds that would otherwise be deallocated um, uh, to, to the project, which would reduce that burden. We, we don't have anything definite yet. We've got some positive signs we're hopeful of. So that may, there, there's a silver lining here. Hopefully we'll get to that point. But for now, for tonight, um, uh, R1923 does authorize the county administrator to budget and appropriate up to $121,000 from the Southeast Impact Fee Fund and up to $431,000 uh, from the Transportation Fund, giving us, in total, we, we don't need any more than this 551-393 number that you see in your background report. Um, the funds are available in the Transportation Fund to accommodate this project, and we do, again, recommend approval of that. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have, and I'll note that uh, VDOT uh, has sent a couple representatives at, at the request of the board in case you might have any questions. Any questions for Jason? Ms. Baumke. So um, the Southeast Impact Fee Fund, I'm assuming that that's, those are impact fees from uh, residential homes? Yes. Okay. All right. So that money would be used for people that live and use that intersection? Yes. Okay. Which is an appropriate use of that. And then the transportation money, if we vote to move forward with this, would come out of our $3 million that we current have, currently have in the transportation project? That's correct. Okay. 
Yeah, I guess my other question is, why are these right-of-way um, expenses just, it, it, this seems to be a common occurrence. Yes. Do we know why this is happening? Um, yeah, so there's, I think you may be aware too of some of the legislation that uh, we've been dealing with some of the outfalls of from the state legislation in terms of um, some of the additional right-of-way costs that that's driven over the, the past few years. Specifically in this case, I know that there's still some outstanding um, negotiations going on uh, with the McDonald's at that intersection that has, they've built in some numbers there. And then um, CSX um, actually came back in, in on the bid um, with $100,000 in extra costs that they had not originally included. Um, so I guess they had some labor rate changes um, and, and there was an additional item that they had excluded in the original um, discussions that were had. So those two things um, have really, in addition that the project is was bid about a year later than originally, originally anticipated and costs have come up a little bit. So those three factors combined have really okay. driven this cost. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mr. Cohen, no? No, no I do. Mr. Dudenhefer. <clears throat> The, the money coming out of transportation fund, mm -hmm. was that allocated to anything else? Or is it basically waiting to be allocated? It would be waiting to be allocated. So of course it would potentially impact any other future projects. So now, we, now we'll have $2.5 million in the transportation fund. Yes, it would impact. Uh, I, I could get you an exact balance that this, how it would impact, but. It, I, and I know that construction costs are going up, but we're, they're doing a lot of value engineering and different things on on certain projects. Does any of this, what we're doing here, uh, provide access, better access to the ferry farm, to, to ferry farms? The, to, uh, to, are you speaking about the Not foundation the property? To, yeah, the foundation property. So the, the, base, um, the base cost that we're dealing with here and the, the change to that base cost, the $550,000, um, is, is done separately um, from their betterments. So certainly the intersection in general, the traffic flow in the intersection as it stands now would be improved, but it does not, um, it does not create or, or drive their entrance in any way. They have a separate betterment cost for, I believe it was 500000 their costs have gone up too. I think it's at 563, um, to for them to add on to this project, and that is being tracked separately through VDOT. So the decision today would not, of course, if the board decided not to do it, that would certainly have an impact on on their project. But well, uh, I mean, it would not. The difference of we pay 450,000 and get the road finished, or we pay 900,000 and we get nothing. I mean, we're not, we're really not given a choice here. Is it my understanding too that the EDA gave fifty thousand dollars to the to the foundation for pro their project? Seems to me that they, sh you know, if they're going to give out money for projects like this, they could have given it to us to offset our cost, not not the foundation who has been about as uncooperative with us as anybody there is out there. So. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the EDA's action on it. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Snelling. Um, yes, Mr. Cohen. Okay, I, yeah, I have an actual question. If sure. um, if we don't do it, where does the 1.8 million come from? Does that come out of the transportation fund, or is there somewhere else that that money would come from? So we've already um, essentially so nine, roughly half of it has already been spent. Um, the other half of it, VDOT is actually holding. We've already given them our 50 percent of the construction costs. So they we that would be at a loss. Um, we would essentially there was about. $2 million in the Southeast um, impact fee fund um, that would essentially be gone if we did not move forward. Thank you, sir. Sure. Any other questions? Ms. Bonk? Yeah, uh, Mr. Dudenheffer, I believe that the money for the EDA has not been um, paid to the foundation. That's my understanding from my EDA representative, that they're actually reviewing their application now. Um, but also, I just wanted to mention that um, one of the reasons that this has been so delayed is because we were having negotiations with the foundation regarding the trail easement. So that's the primary reason that this is so delayed um, and that we had to bid the project later. 
Any other questions? Uh, I have one question. We've, we've had projects come in in the past over budget, over estimates, whatever, and we've gone out and rebid them. And in some cases, we've been very successful. Would you see any, could we go out and rebid this and maybe shave off 100 or 200, maybe the whole 550? I'm actually going to ask Kathy to come up. Um, I'm, I'm not familiar completely with their bidding time frames. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Coffey with BDOT. And um, as far as the could we rebid it, we could. Um, there's certainly nothing that would prevent us from doing that. We did get three bids on this one. Two of them were about as close as I have seen bids come in. Um, they're from contractors in the area who, you know, we've had successful projects with. Uh, because they were so close together, I'm not sure. <laughs> You know, we may get a better bid, we may not. Some of it depends on market saturation. Some of it depends on, you know, what work is going on at the time. I mean, one thing that would certainly do is delay the improvement. Um, right now we have, we're looking at a construction end date of either an early completion date of April 28th of 2020 or May 28th of 2020 for the two dates. So if we were to rebid and then go through the process again, that would probably delay it. It could push us almost into the next season because it could push us so late in that season we couldn't pave because of weather. So, you know, certainly we could rebid. There would be potential implications for that. Could get better prices, could get worse. We're just not really sure. Okay, thank you. And I appreciate you being here mm -hmm. as well. Not a problem. Any other questions? Okay, um, uh, County Attorney, I believe we have to waive our bylaws, is that correct? Um, Mr. Chairman, you need to find this matter time sensitive to take it up today. Okay. So not actually a waiver, it's just a time sensitivity vote. Okay, uh, I need a motion for that? No, I make a motion to um, dignify this as time sensitive. I have a motion, I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Mr. Cohen, this is your district. Yes, sir. I make a motion for R19-23. I have a motion on the second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Tally the vote. Motion passes seven to nothing. And then I believe I need to make a motion for R18-246, correct? No, that's right. That's it? Okay. Passed, yeah. cool. Uh, that's all I have on the agenda, unless, uh, Mr. Foley, you have anything else that needs to be discussed this evening? I don't, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned.